Welcome to the final video for my USS Enterprise project, the culmination of over 10 years of research and model building to produce the USS Enterprise CVA N65 and the aircraft of Carrier Air Wing 9 as they appeared during their 1968 cruise during the Vietnam conflict. In this video, I include a brief history of the Big E's operations that year, as well as background information on the ship and each of the aircraft types that graced her flight deck. I also include complete lists of the references, kits, decals, and accessories, as well as the build descriptions and any modifications I made to represent each subject. Here's a complete list of the references I used. Chief among them was the GRS videos USS Enterprise 1968 Tonkin Golf video, comprised of actual crew members submitted onboard footage, as well as the Enterprise's 1968 cruise book available online. Here's the list of kits, decals, and accessories I used to produce the ship, the basis of which is the 1-720 Ravel Kit 5046 and the Starfighter decal set specific to the ship and Air Wing 9 from 1968. And here is the build description and list of all the modifications I made to produce the Big E as she appeared in 1968 to the best of my abilities. USS Enterprise CVAN-65 was the first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier and the eighth United States naval vessel to bear the name. Like her World War II predecessor, whose portholes graced her bow, she was nicknamed Big E. Enterprise had a crew of over 4,600 service members. At 1,123 feet, she was the longest naval vessel ever built. Her 93,284 tons of displacement rank her as the third heaviest carrier after the Nimitz and Ford classes. Enterprise is the only aircraft carrier with more than two nuclear reactors, with each of her eight A2W reactors replacing a conventional boiler of earlier design. She was also the only carrier with four rudders, two more than other classes, and featured a more cruiser-like hull. Launched in 1960 without the planned RIM-2 Terrier missile launchers, late in 1967 she was fitted with a prototype basic point defense missile system, starboard below the island, used to launch and direct Sea Sparrow missiles fired from two eight-round box launchers. After completing an overhaul, shipyard work, and sea trials out of NAS Alameda on 7 September 1967, Enterprise steamed to San Diego to embark Carrier Air Wing 9 and get underway for refresher training off the California coast. While Enterprise was visiting Sasebo, Japan in January 1968, the U.S. intelligence ship USS Pueblo was seized by North Korea. Enterprise was flagship of Task Force 71 formed in response and operated near South Korean waters for almost a month during Operation Formation Star. As diplomacy diffused tensions and the Tet Offensive aftermath urgently beckoned, Enterprise was released to return to Yankee Station on 16 February 1968. Enterprise returned to NASA Alameda on 18 July 1968, having completed 12,839 catapult launches with 12,246 sorties, 9,182 of them in combat. Both Enterprise and Carrier Air Wing 9 each received the Navy Unit Commendation. Here is the list of squadrons that flew off the Enterprise in 1968, with the aircraft that I modeled highlighted in yellow. And here is the list of model kits I built to represent each of those aircraft. The North American RA-5C Vigilante, RA standing for Reconnaissance Attack, was equipped with a long canoe-shaped fairing under the fuselage, housing a multi-sensor reconnaissance pack including side-looking airborne radar, an infrared line scanner, and various camera packs. Vigilantes carried out reconnaissance missions both over potential targets prior to bombing missions to assist in bombing mission planning, as well as the extremely hazardous medium-level post-strike BDA, or bomb damage assessment, reconnaissance missions. This latter mission exposed vigilantes to relentless anti-aircraft fire as the Viet Cong came to anticipate its arrival sometime after the bombing or attack missions. Although the supersonic vigilantes proved fast and agile, 18 RA-5Cs were lost in combat, 14 to anti-aircraft fire, 3 to surface-to-air missiles, and 1 to a MiG-21 during Operation Linebacker 2. 
The McDonnell Douglas F4 Phantom II was a tandem two-seat twin-engine all-weather long-range supersonic jet interceptor and fighter bomber. It served as a principal air superiority fighter for the U.S. Navy during the Vietnam conflict, with a focus on air-to-air -air interception in fleet air defense missions and in flying CAP, or combat air patrol. With a top speed of over Mach 2.2, it could carry more than 18,000 pounds of weapons on nine external hardpoints, including air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-ground missiles, and various bombs. An F-4B from VF-96 Fighting Falcons scored the first air-to-air -air victory of the war on 9 April 1965, shooting down a Chinese MiG-17. In the F-4B modeled here, on 9 May 1968, U.S. Air Force Exchange pilot Captain John Hefferman and his RIO, Lieutenant Frank Schumacher, shot down a Vietnam People's Air Force MiG-21 with an AIM-7 missile, after which an additional white MiG silhouette was added to the tail. On 10 May 1972, Lieutenant Randy Duke Cunningham and Lieutenant William P. Driscoll of VF-96 shot down three MiG-17s to become the first American flying aces of the war. The McDonnell Douglas A-4E Skyhawk was a single-seat, subsonic, carrier-capable, light-attack aircraft. This compact, lightweight aircraft had a maximum takeoff weight of 24,500 pounds. Its five hardpoints could support a variety of missiles, bombs, and other munitions, such as air-to-ground rocket launchers. The U.S. Navy operated the type as its principal attack aircraft during the Vietnam War, carrying out some of the first airstrikes by the U.S. during the conflict. The A-4F was a refinement of the A-4E with extra avionics housed in the hump on the fuselage spine. It also had nose-wheel steering and a more powerful engine. Navy Skyhawks were the first aircraft to be deployed outside of the U.S. armed with the AIM-9 Sidewinder. On air-to-ground strike missions, the Skyhawks' normal role, air-to-air -air armaments could be used for self-defense. The Grumman A-6 Intruder was a subsonic twin-jet all-weather attack aircraft for long-range interdiction missions. Operated by a crew of two in a side-by-side -side seating configuration, the workload was divided between the pilot and weapons officer bombardier navigator. The design incorporated several cutting-edge features for the era. The intruder was the first Navy aircraft with an integrated airframe and weapon systems. The A-6 intruders first saw action during the Vietnam War. The aircraft's long range and heavy payload of 18,000 pounds, coupled with its all-weather capabilities, made it invaluable during the war. However, its typical mission profile of flying low to deliver its payload made it especially vulnerable to anti-aircraft fire. And in the eight years of the Vietnam War, the U.S. Navy and U.S. Marine Corps lost a total of 84 aircraft. The Grumman E-2A Hawkeye was a twin turboprop, all-weather, carrier-capable, tactical airborne early warning aircraft. This aircraft fulfilled the Navy's requirement for an early warning aircraft whose gathered data could be integrated into the Naval Tactical Data System aboard the Navy's ships. Its most distinguishing feature, a 24-foot diameter rotating radar dome mounted above the fuselage and wings, houses the E-2's primary antennas for its long-range radar and IFF systems. The aerodynamics of the disc actually assist the aircraft's lift capabilities. The plane's other purposes include sea and land surveillance, the control of the aircraft carrier's fighter planes for air defense, the control of strike aircraft on offensive missions, the control of search and rescue missions for naval personnel lost at sea, and relaying both air-to-air -air and ship-to-air radio communications. The McDonnell Douglas A3 Skywarrior was originally developed as a twin jet-powered carrier-capable strategic bomber. Initially used in a nuclear-armed strategic bomber role, the emergence of ballistic missiles led to bombing missions being deprioritized by the early 1960s. Throughout the majority of its latter service life, the Skywarrior was tasked with various secondary missions, which included use as an electronic warfare platform, tactical reconnaissance aircraft, 
and high-capacity aerial refueling tanker. The A3 found subsequent service as a tanker, designated KA-3B, which was a real workhorse for the refueling of the carrier air wing. Another variant of the Douglas A3 Skywarrior was the EKA-3B. 34 KA-3B tankers were retrofitted with a dual role of electronic countermeasures as well as tanker service which added electronic warfare equipment and a tail fairing in place of the rear turret. Electronic jamming equipment was specifically added without removing tanker capability, so the EKA-3B could jam enemy radar while waiting to refuel tactical aircraft. Throughout its service, the KA and EKA Skywarriors were the heaviest operational aircraft to operate from aircraft carriers, which contributed to its nickname, the Whale. The Cayman H-2 Sea Sprite is a ship-based helicopter fulfilling the U.S. Navy's requirement for a suitably fast and compact naval utility helicopter. Single-engined UH-2As and UH-2B helicopters were retrofitted with two General Electric turboshaft engines, resulting in the twin-engine UH-2C helicopter, which had an airspeed of 130 knots and a 411 nautical mile operating range. The Sea Sprite's main role in the Vietnam War was carrier search and rescue of downed aircrew at sea and over land. The reliance on the Sea Sprite in this role increased as the conflict intensified. During October of 1966 alone, these helicopter-based search and rescue teams recovered 103 out of 269 downed pilots. The Grumman C-1A Trader fulfilled the carrier onboard delivery mission known as COD, delivering passengers, cargo, and mail to deployed flattops. The C-1A had the same performance characteristics as the sub-hunting S-2 Tracker, the airframe from which it was adapted, with design changes including a deeper fuselage, windows along the sides to accommodate up to nine rear-facing passengers, or 3,500 pounds of cargo. The cabin could also be equipped with litters one atop another for transport of non-ambulatory passengers. A large port-side folding cargo door opening on double hinges facilitated oversized cargo. To secure such cargo, vertical bulkheads were fitted forward and rear, movable and securable along upper and lower rails. Each of the plane's two engine nacelles were extended to house two seven-man life rafts in the event of a forced landing at sea. Reliably airworthy, the plane could make a deck launch from a carrier with just two knots of wind over the deck at a maximum takeoff weight of 24,650 pounds. The trader could achieve a speed of 281 miles an hour at 4,000 feet with a range of 1,110 miles. So that concludes my longest running modeling project by far. I've included links in the description to my playlist of all the videos of the builds of the models you just saw, as well as a link to my Scalemates project stash, which lists all the kits I use in this project. So as always, I hope you found that interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments. And thanks for watching, and happy modeling.